Hi everyone, Ian here. In this video, I'm just going to show you a quick tip, which is how you can have one object inherit some animation from another object, but just offset in time. Uh, so sometimes a duplicate is a little bit too much um, work, a bit too much, a bit too heavy. Um, for when you want to do just, just do just some simple time offsetting, and so um, yeah, we can do that uh, via other ways uh, in cavalry. So I, I just thought I'd show you. Um, now uh, in this scene, we've just got a yellow ellipse moving across the top, and then there's a coral kind of peachy ellipse at the bottom, and that's just moving one second behind the shape at the top. Um, and the way that we do this is very very easy. I'll just show you now. So I'll set up a new scene. We'll add ourselves an ellipse. Going to move it up here, and then I'm going to key the X channel from say. Um, frame zero to frame 80 over here, like so. And um, then let's have another shape. We'll give ourselves a rectangle, make it a bit bigger, and then let's move this down here. Now, I want the rectangle to inherit the X position animation from the ellipse. So not the Y, because I want it to have its own position in Y, so it's down at the bottom of the screen. So I just want it to have the X position. Okay, so in order to do that, what we need to do is add a, um, add a, value behavior to the position X on the rectangle. So I've got the rectangle um, settings up in the attribute editor. And uh, to do this, I can just right click on position, I can go add behavior, then go down to value and value X. So this is just gonna connect um, a, um, a value a value behavior to the position X. Um, I can still move Y, so I can still move it around to the Y axis, um, but the value X is now being powered by this um, behavior here. So um, in order to in order to get this to follow the animation, what we can do is we can actually just drag from the X um, the X connection anchor on the um, uh, ellipse shape position X. We can just drag into the value um, attribute and just let go. And then basically this means that the um, value is being passed straight through to the rectangle shape. And so this is almost like parenting it basically. Um, only. Uh, we want to offset it in time. And you'll notice that on the value behavior, there is a time offset. And um, there's also one on the value two behavior as well. Um, so now I can put minus 25 in here, which puts me a second behind because I want 25 frames per second um, in this scene. And basically that's all you need to do. So we've got, we just set up some simple animation and, um, and this works in anything. It doesn't have to be position, uh, it could be rotation, could be size, could be anything, any attribute you can just connect a, a value to. Um, and yeah, so this animation becomes offset in time. Um, and then in the in the video that I just had before, I was using a beta feature called Magic Easing, which you can turn on in the preferences. So if you go Cavalry on the, the on Mac OS and go to preferences, um, or I think it's in the Windows menu, it's on the Windows menu on Windows uh, preferences. Uh, you can uh, turn on beta features there, and then if you just select the uh, first keyframe and then go uh, to Magic Easing and go Spring Out, um, that gives us um, the Spring Out animation. Um, which makes it a little bit more interesting. I think a small spring out is more appropriate there. That's better. Okay, so that's um, that's basically how you can do the time offset animation in a very simple way uh, without using a duplicator to give you a nice and light.